hello people welcome to gurukula so today in this video we are going to see something about the types of small scale fading so we will actually see how small scale fading is classified and what are all the parameters based on which the small scale is categorized and of course this will be our last video in our module 1 so in our module 1 we started off our discussion with uh, all the concepts related to wireless uh, channels so from the next video we will be discussing on the module 2 which talks a lot about the architecture of mobile communication systems so today this video is going to be all about the types of small scale fading so just to see what are all the types of small scale fading in order to classify the small scale fading it can be classified based on two parameters so the first parameter is it can be classified based on time delay spread or it can be classified based on Doppler spread. So time delay spread which actually leads to time dispersion and Doppler spread which actually leads to frequency dispersion. So if I have to analyze a particular channel on time domain then I will have to focus on this time delay spread. Then if I have to analyze a channel on frequency domain then obviously I have to focus on this Doppler spread factor. So first of all we will see one by one first we will look upon how do we classify the small scale fading based on time delay spread so based on time delay spread it can be further classified into two types of small scale fading the first one will be flat fading and the second one will be frequency selective fading so we will march forward and then we will see when flat fading will occur and when frequency selective fading will occur so first of all flat fading so flat fading will usually happen when the bandwidth of the signal is less than the bandwidth of the channel or the delay spread is less than the symbol period. So flat fading will happen at these two cases whenever the bandwidth of the signal is less than the bandwidth of the channel and whenever the delay spread is less than the symbol period. So if I have to mention this particular statement as a symbols then I can represent like this where BS represents the bandwidth of the signal and BC represents the bandwidth of the channel. Similarly Sigma Tau represents the delay spread and TS represents the symbol period. So this is what this is when the scenario when flat fading will occur and similarly when frequency selective fading will occur the frequency selective fading will happen when the bandwidth of the signal is greater than the bandwidth of the channel and when the delay spread is greater than the symbol period so which is quite uh, opposite to the flat fading scenario and I can represent this as well as an symbol so obviously BS stands for bandwidth of the signal and BC stands for the bandwidth of the channel and where Sigma Tau represents the delay spread and TS represents the symbol period so this is all about I can classify a small scale fading based on time delay spread and now we will see how can I classify small scale fading based on the Doppler spread so this can also be further classified into two types and here one we will call it as fast fading scenario and another one we will call it as slow fading scenario so fast fading scenario will happen whenever I experience high Doppler spread whenever there is a high Doppler spread and when the coherence time is less than the symbol period and the bandwidth of the channel varies faster than the bandwidth of the signal so when the variation of the channel bandwidth is higher than the variations of the signal bandwidth then all these things contribute towards a fading we can call that as fast fading and if I have to represent that in symbol we can always write it as like this so TC stands for coherence time and TS stands for symbol period and v BS represents the bandwidth of the signal and BD stands for the Doppler spread of the Doppler spread the slow fading the second category is what slow fading is the slow fading is can be experienced whenever we have very low Doppler spread and when the coherence time is greater than the symbol period and whenever the variation of the channel bandwidth is slower than the bandwidth of the signal variation so this can be represented in symbol like this and I always recommend you to make a note of all these symbols over here 
because in the next slide we will be eliminating the uh, sentences and we will be dealing only with the symbols over here and I recommend to replay this segment of the video twice or thrice to have a better understanding on this. So we will march forward and then we will see how small scale fading can be represented as a function of delay spread and then the bandwidth. So here I have represented the same classification of small scale fading but in terms of symbols over here. So now we will march forward and then we will try to represent the small scale fading uh, in a matrix format but as a function of symbol period. So in order to do this what I will do is I will take an axis which represents TS which represents TS and I am going to compare the value of TS with sigma tau that is delay spread. So if I compare this the first comparison is what over here. So as per this comparison whenever the TS has a higher value than sigma tau then the flatting uh, sorry the fading can be classified as flat fading. So the region actually where my TS is higher than sigma tau is this particular region. So this is the region where exactly my TS has or holds the higher value than sigma tau. So this region is what we classify as flat fading. So I can happily write it as flat fading. And another comparison of TS with sigma tau lies over here and here whenever the TS is lesser than sigma tau then that particular region is classified as or categorized as frequency selective fading. So here in this particular graph so where this is the particular region where the TS holds the value which is lesser than the sigma tau. So this region is what we call it as frequency selective fading. So another thing I can also compare the value of TS with TC as well. So we will have an another axis like this and then now we will try to compare the value of TS with TC over here. So our first comparison goes over here and the color differentiation have been made for better understanding. Nothing other than that. So when I compare TS with TC, so whenever the region I have TS is greater than TC. So here in this particular graph, this is the region where TS holds the higher value than TC. So this region is what we call it as this entire region is what we call it as fast fading. So I can write it as fast fading over here and wherever I have TS that is less than TC is what we call it as slow fading. So here in our graph based on this particular axis this is the region where my TS holds the value that is lesser than TC. So this is the value of TC. So obviously to the left of this particular value my TS, TS is going to have a lesser value than TC. So this entire region I can classify that as slow fading. So I can happily write it as slow fading. So this is a matrix representation of fading but as a function of TS that is symbol period. So we have compared the value of symbol period with the delay spread sigma tau and as well as coherence time TC. So this graph will be helpful for us to understand what type of fading we will experience in different regions with respect to symbol period. And similarly I can march forward and then we can also try to represent uh, the fading as a matrix representation but this time I can uh, represent as a function of signal bandwidth. So what I will do is I will follow the same approach. I am going to have an axis which represents the signal bandwidth which is BS and I can compare the value of BS with BC that is channel bandwidth. So the first comparison goes over here. So this is the first comparison I can do. So whenever my BS is lesser than the BC. So the region which holds the less value than BC I can classify that as flat fading. So here in our graph we can see that this is the particular region where my BS holds lesser value than BC. So that is classified as flat fading and similarly I can compare or the regions which uh, 
which is higher than BC value, meaning that when the BS has higher value than BC, when the signal bandwidth is higher than the coherence bandwidth, we can call that as frequency selective fading. And similarly, I can also compare the value of BS with BD now, that is Doppler spread. So, what we can do is, we can always find out the value of BS where it is lesser than BD, we can classify that as fast fading. So, this is the region where actually my BS is less than BD. So, this particular region, I will experience a fast fading. So, I can classify that as fast fading. And obviously, this segment where BS holds the higher value than BD, I can classify that as slow fading. So, here it is what slow fading is. So, that is how I can actually represent the small scale fading as a function of symbol period and as well as the signal bandwidth. So, this helps us to understand what type of fading I will experience in different regions over here for different values of TS, Sigma Tau and TC and as well as BS, BC and then BD. So, this comparison will be handy for us to understand what type of fading we will experience at different regions with different parameters concerned. So, actually this particular uh, slide explains what are all the types of fading. Now, we will try to look forward um, <clears throat> the overall classification of fading. So, I hope you might all have remembered the very introductory classes. Uh, we just classified the fading into several types. So, we will look that slide once again in the next few minutes. So, this is actually an overall classification of fading or overall types of fading I could say. So, fading is broadly classified into two types, one is small scale fading and another one is large scale fading. Actually, we started off discussing the large scale fading in our previous lecture videos and then we, it, the large scale fading is classified as path loss model and as well as the shadowing fading. And similarly, small scale fading, in order to understand the small scale fading, we just understood what are all the parameters which influences the small scale fading and we just classified the small scale fading based on the multipart delay spread and actual as the Doppler spread and this can be also said as time delay spread. So, based on the multipart delay, this is further classified into flat fading and then frequency selective fading and whereas on the other side, the Doppler spread is further classified into fast fading and then slow fading. So, now I believe that this makes sense for the overall classification of fading. So, that is the end of the module 1 that is wireless channels and now we will quickly summarize what are all the concepts that we have seen in this module 1. So, this is an overall summary of module 1. So, we were discussing the concepts related to wireless channels. So, we started off our concept with large scale path loss model and to in order to formulate the large scale path loss, we just uh, said there are two path loss models. First one is free space path loss model and then we discussed about the two ray models and this represents the path loss large scale fading and this actually represents the shadowing which is actually related to the large scale path loss. And then on the other side, we started discussing with small scale fading. We started our discussion with the parameters of mobile multipath channel and under that we have seen three parameters. One is time dispersion parameter, what is coherence bandwidth and actually what Doppler spread and coherence time are. And then we might have seen what are all the multipart fading time delay spread. So, we have seen two types of fading that is actually flat fading and frequency selective fading and we have discussed when flat fading will occur and when frequency selective fading will occur. And we have also seen that the fading which occurs due to Doppler spread and we have seen its types as well. One is fast fading and another one is slow fading and we have seen when these kinds of fading will occur and then we also summarized all these types of fadings and we try to represent that as a matrix form in order to understand what type of fading we will be experiencing at different regions. So, that is all about today's uh, lecture. So, we will see in the next module in the next video. Until then, happy learning.